hello everyone. Uh, my name's Emily Polak and I'm a researcher at, um, at the IAD. Um, great that so many people could join us today, especially under the current global circumstances. Uh, and I'm sure many people are attending from less than usual situations. Um, some people may have signed up prior to changes that have taken place, um, but great that many people have managed to join. Uh, we will be recording this and we'll be putting out uh, a note afterwards on, on the presentations and discussion. Um, but first I'd like to welcome you all to this fourth webinar in a series that we're running. This is a series on approaches to empowering producers in commercial agriculture. It's a series supported by a four year project led by IAD, but in collaboration with partners in Nepal and Malawi uh, and is financially supported by the UK DFID under the Commercial Agriculture for Smallholders and Agribusiness Programme, or CASA. Uh, so welcome everyone. Um, a key part of this endeavour uh, is gathering evidence from around the world and testing approaches on how producers um, in challenging situations are exercising agency, are finding sources of empowerment to address challenges in their value chain relations, in their market relations. Um, so for example, we're gathering uh, experiences, insights into different approaches to addressing information and power asymmetries, approaches that support producers to be in the driving seat, or at least to be engaging and interacting with public and private sector actors from a position of, of strength. Um, so in light of that as the background, um, we're very pleased to be hosting today a group of panelists um, who are gonna share their experiences of the eGranary platform um, that is aiming to serve East African farmers um, and you'll hear, hear about that directly from the speakers. Um, eGranary was inspired by a similar platform in India. It was established to create strong and reliable market linkages as well as key services in one space, one package, uh, and a, a model that stays in the, through a model that stays in the hands of, of producer organizations to some extent. So I won't say any more on, on eGranary. Um, my understanding is still in relatively early days, um, but uh, have come a long way and have many lessons um, that have been learnt um, and lessons to share. And we felt that this warranted sharing this experience more widely. Um, I'm sure the, those involved directly would also benefit sharing and exchanging with others. So we'd like to bring you this webinar in the spirit very much of mutual exchange and learning on a global scale about what might work well, what can work well, what can we do more of, what can we do differently? How do we overcome some of the really challenging, um, challenging barriers and, uh, and exploit new opportunities? in market systems from the perspective of producers. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our panel who will take you through the key components, the progress to date, the challenges and the lessons for others. Um, once the panelists have, have shared with us their perspectives and, and their experiences, we'll have a Q&A discussion and discussion session um, and for that, we welcome comments and questions, uh, I believe, in the Q&A box uh, and IAD on our side will manage those, directing them to the, to the panellists in turn as relevant. Um, and perhaps we can start with mainly questions and comments in response to what we've heard, and then we can mode, move on to more general sharing and relevant experiences. And we very much encourage that. So even if it's in this short window that we have together, flagging things for other people to explore following the webinar, and we can stay connected through other means. So um, please do use that opportunity to, to really exchange. Um, so the speakers we have, firstly, Stephen Maturi um, will give us an overview presentation. Stephen is the executive director of the East African Farmers Federation. He's also CEO of eGranary. The EAFF is a regional network of farmer, national farmer unions, federations and cooperatives in 10 countries. And he'll tell you more about eGranary. 
Following that overview from Stephen, we'll hear from three panellists who are connected to the platform in some way and hear comments from them, from their perspectives. Firstly, we'll hear from Daniel Nyaga, who is a farmer in Kenya, who's been interacting with the platform in Kenya. Uh, and then Giles Lewis, who is a grain and oilseed trader in East Africa at ETG, which is a leading integrated agricultural supply chain group with operating entities across four country, 40 countries, um, covering procurement, warehousing, processing, and or manufacturing and finished, of finished goods, um, and also in transporting and distributing products. Uh, and then we'll move to Caroline, Caroline Karayuki, who is a project manager at Vision Fund Kenya. Vision Fund is a microfinance institution that aims to offer effective credit, as well as economic empowerment through business support for rural communities. And we'll hear from Caroline how Vision Fund has been involved and engaged with eGranary. So we're very honoured to have these speakers join us and, and bring their experiences together uh, in this session, particularly in turbulent times. We appreciate people being able to make time and be available when there's a lot of changes happening. Um, and we look forward to hearing their perspectives. So I'll hand over now, I can see this presentation is ready, hand over now to, to Stephen. Yeah, so my name is Stephen Moshiri, I'm the Chief Executive Officer, and uh, I'll run you through a couple of slides um, that we've prepared for this particular engagement. And uh, next is a context, uh, content of my presentations. Next slide. <coughs> Yeah, so why are we talking about digitization or digitizing agriculture? One uh, of the major challenges we have in Africa is that uh, agriculture is so fragmented. And fragmentation uh, lies in between farmers, in between the organizations, and along the value chain. And it's only through a virtual uh, platform that you can actually be able to bring together all these actors. And that's what we've actually done with our e-granary, where we're able to aggregate farmers, uh, for input markets, output markets, uh, and services. And here we include finance, mechanization, and extension. Next. Um, next. So agriculture is faced by many, many challenges. And we thought these two actually stood out. One, uh, that there's low collective action by farmers. And two, that there's lack of data on farming. Uh, and under uh, the issues of collective action, uh, due to that weakness, a lot of farmers have challenges in uh, jointly marketing, uh, jointly procuring. Uh, of course, due to, due to fragmentation, there's a challenge of access or provision of services. Is a challenge to actually have effective and efficient technology uptake. Um, that again brings challenges of uh, building, building uh, strong partnerships and of course value addition. With respect to lack of data, um, this is a major challenge because it affects both uh, policymakers as well as investors. And we feel that uh, due to that challenge, we, Africa is lagging behind in terms of attracting innovative investments in finance, in value addition, uh, in advisory services, and that has, a, has an impact on policy. Next. So when we ventured on building the e-granary, uh, we looked at the typical profile of a farmer. And one thing about Kenya where we started is that uh, one, um, there's massive mobile penetration. Most of the farmers are on mobile money. I think you know about M-Pesa, which is globally known. Uh, most of the adult population are actually farmers and about 60% of farmers are actually in cooperatives of self-help groups. So we tried to look at how we could address uh, four major issues which they actually face. One was markets in terms of uh, reliability and consistency finance and insurance in terms of inclusivity, resources, there were challenges in terms of access to certified inputs, labor, uh, you know, pro properly pricing labor, as well as uh, appropriate equipment. And of course, it was a big challenge of, of knowledge uh, due to the fact that uh, there was a lot of knowledge asymmetry and there was a challenge in terms of uh, delivering this through extension and otherwise. Next. So the slide before, I think it's jumped. Eh? Slide before, please. Yeah, thank you. So what are we trying to achieve with the e-granary? Um, the e-granary is, um, is unique because one is led by farmers. Most of the, the e-platforms are not led by, by farm organizations. And it brings together at least four services, brings four services in one. 
So the underlying uh, pro pro proposition on the e-grana is that uh, the ecosystem that we build actually benefits everybody. Uh, and here, for example, we start with the farmer. One is that we ensure that the farmer gets a price and uh, the best we can, the best price, they're able to access certified inputs and they're able to work with financial institutions to tailor make a financial solution. Uh, on this aspect, farmers have to actually be formally organized and have to have at least expertise in the value chain they're actually engaging. For financial institutions, we, we, we allow them to have access to what we would call the risk farmer. And, and the idea is that uh, whatever loan product or credit product we build is actually based on, because we work on this, you know, every season. So there's an inclination towards it being based on income. Uh, and of course, because they're using groups, you know, there's a lot of group uh, approach to that in, in terms of reducing risk. And uh, we try to ensure that um, the financial product actually is bundled. So it covers the cost of inputs, or covers the cost of insurance premium, and to some extent, or in the future, uh, services around mechanization and so on. And this loan, we actually negotiated on behalf of the farm. With respect to the buyer, we try to ensure that they actually have access to um, a quality product that can actually be traceable. We actually have traceability on our system. And when it comes to pricing, we actually negotiate on these prices with and on behalf of the farmer. Next. Um, so in building a platform, there are certain things that we observed. One, that uh, technology is not a silver bullet, especially in agriculture. Um, and you need to build this tech on a sound and feasible business plan. There's need to invest on relationships that are non-tech. You know, for, for agriculture to work because of the very many uh, moving parts and the many uh, partnerships that you're actually building, you have to really work on partnerships within the farmers themselves, between the organizations, with other actors, and so on. The business model has to have a market orientation. We've tried to work a lot from the market end towards, towards the farmer, because it has to make business sense when you're actually proposing this um, to the farmer. Then the idea at the end of it is that uh, we generate data, and this data actually helps us in terms of, we, we do a lot of work on policy, but also it helps us in terms of negotiating better engagement with off-takers and other actors uh, who we've actually invited to the plan. Next. Next. So this next slide actually shows a basic model. I know uh, we've tried not to put a very complex one, but basically what happens is that um, the e grant more or less aggregates everybody. So we start off with groups that are actually uh, organized. Uh, we ensure that they actually are able then to access bulk in bulk, uh, procurement of inputs, so we're able to get a, a, a quantity discount. Uh, we're able then to tailor make extension, whether at the beginning of the season or during the season. Then we're able to, to negotiate for them services, whether it's equipment leasing, whether it's uh, microfinance, whether it's post harvest services, and all this has to come uh, under contract. And, and like I said earlier, we use all this to actually help us in policy and advocacy. We advocate along all those areas that I've actually mentioned. Next. So currently, we have about 260,000 farmers, 240 in Kenya, 15,000 in Uganda, and slightly over 5,000 in Rwanda, dealing with all sorts of uh, uh, cereals and grains. We are currently reviewing our service delivery model in partnership with the Institute of Sustainable Development. I think the biggest challenge so far, and I think is the biggest challenge in agriculture, has always been access to finance. And uh, I think the challenge we faced was trying to you know, get the big banks on board, uh, but you're lucky that uh, Vision Fund actually agreed to, to work with that. And the challenge, I think, at the onset when we started providing this, this, this support had been um, uh, the collateral value. Um, the, the request was 20% uh, from the farmers and 20% from here, but 40% of the loan. I know with time we've been able to, to, to negotiate this based on the performance of the farmers and of course other, child, other issues and now it's 10% to the farmer. In Uganda, it's, it's, it's 14% uh, in terms of collateral demand. Uh, the interest rates are also high. I know we've been dealing with 36%, uh, but again, that has been negotiated, and I think uh, my, my colleague Karin, Caroline is here, and that is falling to about 24, 25%. So like I said, so far, only the microfinance institutions have actually shown interest in working with us. Next. Um, so what are the challenges? What are the other challenges that we faced? <laughs> now, we've, we've opened up in Uganda and Rwanda, like I mentioned, and it's been a challenge just setting up. Uh, it took us about eight months, and we needed to do, you know, regulatory studies, as well as looking at competitors and what they're actually doing, and many things around the studies. 
uh, it took time for just setup. Uh, we had uh, to acquire what we call the unstructured supplementary service data, USSD acquisition, which again requires, it's, it's, a, sec it's a security issue. You have to be assessed by the security operators of the country, of course, setting up the partners and of course the HR. Um, second thing is uh, pharma coordination. Again, you realize within groups there's a lot of heterogeneity. You know, so, so trying to get the homogeneity around it so that you can have actually have homogeneous data also takes a bit of time. Synchronizing partners, of course, creates a lot of delays. Like you've seen, we have almost four or five kind of partners from inputs to services to all that, and you have to synchronize all of this. Um, issues, of course, of quality of product. We are, we are having climate change challenges affecting, you know, us during harvest with high moisture, aflatoxin, and so on. Price fluctuations in, in the region we come from, there are challenges. You know, government sets pricing. Sometimes you have market glass, and you, you really need to understand all this. Of course, repayment by the, by the farmers. I, I think you've seen the, the, the cost of interest is quite high. Cost of money is high. But again, coupled with climate change and issues of governance within the groups, again, that contributes to payment defaults. Next. Um, and these, I think, is, is, is the second last slide. Um, so what are, what are the other lessons we've learned? One, that um, I think the biggest challenge that farmers face, among the other challenges, is access to markets and certified input. And I think we've tried to address this with our platform, and we've actually seen a lot of positive response from our members. Um, important lessons include uh, maize procurement, like you've had with you with ETG, which works with many markets. And it's important to understand how they do their procurement so that it informs how we plan our production. Of course, climate change has been a challenge and uh, we've been working through with the insurance partners and the credit partners to ensure that we innovate uh, throughout the season. Of course, the issue of group guarantee, the reason why we work with groups. And uh, that's why when we recruit the farmers, we use a 28 approach. We're able to convince 20, we're able then to convince the remaining 80, bundling all services to reduce transaction costs. Over time, it means if you bundle the inputs, the inputs, um, uh, the other services in between the insurance, then it will become cheaper for the farmers. And then the importance of having farmers organized into groups, because this helps in terms of partnership mobilization. The actual partners actually see value in engaging in large groups. Uh, you able them to negotiate better terms when you're doing bulk procurement of inputs, among many others. When it comes to credit, farmers are actually ready to pay back. We are actually properly priced and structured. When it comes to insurance, of course, now with the challenges of climate change, farmers are demanding insurance. However, they actually want it to be also priced well. And, and then and that's the reason why we are trying to innovate a lot around you know, bundling that. And I think the next one is the last one. Um, next slide, which shows all our partners. And I want to thank uh, those who are actually in the panel, the Farmer David, Daniel, ETG, and Vision Fund. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stephen. Um, I'm now going to ask Caroline to unmute, unmute her microphone and um, share her quick remarks in relation to Stephen's presentation. Caroline, if, over to you. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Caroline Karaoke. I work for Vision Fund Kenya. Vision Fund is a microfinance that is affiliated to our vision and we offer financial uh, support to farmers and small hold, for to smallholder farmers and uh, entrepreneurs. Just like Steve has said, we are in partnership with uh, eGranary to be able to empower the smallholder farmer. And uh, under this partnership, what we do is that uh, we offer uh, financial services and we uh, offer a product called uh, Input Financing. Input Financing, uh, it's a product product where we offer certified inputs uh, that is crop insurance and there is also life insurance. And uh, the reason why we have uh, a bundled product is so that uh, our smallholder farmers can be able to, to benefit from uh, this uh, particular product because we know that uh, sometimes uh, the smallholder farmer, uh, if not supported financially, they are not able to uh, get value for their money. And uh, in Kenya, uh, many people are uh, smallholder farmers since uh, the highest contributor to the country's GDP is uh, through agriculture. So this product, we give uh, 
due to uh, climate change, we are able to, to cushion ourselves. And that's why we offer crop insurance in every season, uh, every input financing loan we give, uh, there has to be a, a crop insurance and also life insurance where we protect the farmer in case the farmer is unwell and they are hospitalized, then the insurance comes on board and pays uh, the loan for the farmer for that particular period that uh, uh, the client is, is hospitalized. Also, in case um, a client loses uh, a spouse or a child who is below 18, uh, 18 years old, insurance uh, comes on board and uh, supports uh, the client with the uh, uh, some check just to, to, to show that uh, Vision Fund cares, you know, and uh, also if the client, uh, when the client has this uh, input financing loan and uh, in case they, they, they die, insurance covers the risk. So we are not, we don't go back to the family to ask for our, fin uh, our money. So uh, how we do this uh, is through group uh, lending. So eGranary helps us to uh, mobilize farmers through their platform. And uh, the farmers, once they register with eGranary, then uh, they, we register them now to uh, Vision Fund Kenya. We offer them trainings, that is financial literacy training. And uh, eGranary uh, also trains them on uh, good farm practices. And uh, we do this, um, in partnership with them and also in partnership with insurance because uh, uh, the, the organization that offers insurance on behalf of uh, Vision Fund, they also comes on board and trains the farmer on uh, the advantages of uh, having insurance. And uh, so this farmer in a group, once they are trained, then we give them the leeway to uh, choose whether they want to go ahead and take the input financing loan or not. And most of them really appreciate that they are able to be given this financial service uh, from Vision Fund Kenya, since uh, most of these big banks, they don't to bank on the smallholder farm. So Vision Fund has gone ahead and taken the risk of uh, uh, empowering this smallholder farmer back in the village in Kenya uh, to be able to, to farm. And this has really uh, given us a uh, uh, it has been able to, to allow the smallholder farmer to be able to make, get value for their money because once we give them, we, we offer them the, the input financing, they're able to farm bigger pieces of land than what they've been farming before they were able to access uh, finance, fi finances. And this also uh, helps them to, to, to produce more and uh, hence uh, there is an increase in source of income for for this uh, smallholder farmer. Uh, so our product, uh, just like I've said, it's a bundled product. And what we are doing is that we are offering uh, a net to end financial solution for the smallholder farmer. So once eGranary uh, uh, mobilizes the farmer, we come on board and uh, offer financial training. And after that, we offer the input financing. We don't give them cash, we give it in kind. This means we, uh, we have as an input supplier who, is, who we pay to, and then the farmer goes and collects the input from them. This allows the farmer to be able to access uh, certified, certified seeds, and uh, this leads to increase of production. Uh, then uh, once the, the client takes that input financing, we work with the farmer from planting to harvesting, and uh, up to aggregation and, and of taking. And we also, through a granary, we've been able to find market for the smallholder farmer. That is uh, through the partnership that we have uh, with a granary. And this has been very helpful to the smallholder farmer since most of these farmers, they know how to farm, but the main challenge is the getting uh, finances to, to be able to do the farming and also getting market. Because in Kenya, we find that uh, the brokers, we have brokers who uh, wait for, for the crop to, 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 to be harvested and then they go and uh, buy from the farmer at a very lower rate. But once we've, we've, gotten, we've got market for this uh, produce for our farmers, then they are able to get a good price 
that is better than what they get from the brokers uh, in the uh, in the field. So this has really uh, made a, a big difference in terms of us being able to impact the smallholder farmer back in the village, since they are able to get um, the finances and also get uh, uh, proper market for their for their crop. Um, so that's what a vision fund has been uh, involved in with eGranary. It's been a very helpful partnership because we as vision fund, we've been able to reach more farmers than, uh, we, than we did before we uh, got, in, got into partnership with eGranary. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Caroline. Um, I will now ask Daniel if you want to also share your quick remarks, five minutes, maybe. You would need to unmute your microphone, Daniel. Yes, thank you very much for the contribution which has been done by uh, Caroline and Moshili. It is true that uh, he granary has uh, assistance farmers very much because they have been, uh, they have been uh, forefront. They, 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 are, they, are, uh, they are giving credit to our, our farmers and uh, farm input uh, plus training our farmers. Now my question to them is, because now we have increased our productivity, uh, how can we, uh, how, how can, uh, how, how can we uh, move forward by having this uh, value addition equipment so that we can uh, value hand our, 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 our produce? Secondly, I want to thank Mr. Caroline, Madam Caroline, because of the financing. Right now, they have financed our groups and the farmers. Right now, we have a, a planting materials in our stores waiting to plant. Now, mine is congratulate them for the work they are doing and hoping that we are moving forward. So, I don't have uh, much to say, but mine is to congratulate them for the work they are doing to the farmers. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Daniel. Yes. Um, uh, Giles, would you like to share your quick remarks? Yeah, hi everyone. Um, I work for ETG as a grain and all seed trader. Um, so I've been heading up the relationship between ETG and uh, EFF and the eGranary platform. Um, so I was just going to give you a bit of a background perhaps on ETG and what we do. Um, so ETG has been uh, present for about 50 years uh, with its foundations in Kenya, um, now operating in over 40 countries, predominantly countries in Africa, but um, we also operate in major um, agricultural markets in the US and Canada and Australia. Um, so I oversee the East Africa grain and all seed trading book. So that includes maize, soybeans, and any other grains or all seeds. Um, ETG is one of the leading fertilizer um, traders on the continent and also one of the largest maize originators in Africa. Uh, obviously maize being a staple food in Africa is a very important commodity. Um, so I think uh, the, the relationship started um, with historical relationships which, between EFF and ETG. Um, obviously our, our brand of fertilizer was known in the market and uh, they were looking for a partner to come in, come on board and and ETG's unique position is that we are able to offer a two-way supply chain. So by providing inputs, fertilizer, seeds, agrochemicals, while also buying back farmers' crops. So in Kenya, we have three major buying uh, points, two located in the main growing regions, Eldoret and Katali, and one main center in Nairobi. Um, those points are used for, for both selling uh, inputs and also buying back farmers' crops. So the discussions uh, began and our contract was set up with the uh, eGranary whereby we provided uh, fertilizers and an agreed price uh, delivered to their various distribution points and at the end of the season based on a pr yield prediction model we priced up a offtake contract for a set number of tons at a minimum price. Um, very few aggregators we're aware of are able to offer a minimum price, especially on a um, volatile price commodity such as maize. 
Um, however, we understand the importance of this in order to build trust within the value chain and also giving financial institutions comfort to provide finance. Um, so we, we based our pricing on a number of different factors, including the pre previous year's government minimum buying price. Um, and over the years, we will obviously tailor make this uh, to ensure that the farmers do not get disappointed at harvest time. While we put in a minimum price, we also update EFF on a weekly or even daily basis on our prices. Um, so if the prices go up, we pay that to the farmer. If the prices go down, the same. So we're completely transparent. Um, for us, um, the advantage is that we are leveraging a lot more off, off our fertilizer supply chain. Historically, obviously, we've been the two businesses have been fairly separate. So that's why we want to work with the likes of EFF and co-ops because they are very powerful um, on the ground presence in, in places like Kenya where value chains are often very fragmented and it's a very relationship driven value chain. So we value that immensely with EFF and uh, we look forward to continuing it going forward, both as Daniel says, he's increasing his uh, yields but also looking at other crops um, where you know the margins might be higher. Um, and as Daniel says, there might be opportunities for adding further value. Um, and I think maybe I'll just throw in there, you know, from my side, that's probably going to be around proteins and soybean. Um, we're just trying to find the right varieties um, suited to Kenya. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my five minutes. Thank you very much, Giles, and thank you to all the panelists. My colleague, Emily Pollack, is going to very quickly wrap up the webinar. Okay, thank you. I'd just like to say a thank you to all the panelists for the webinar today uh, and engaging actively on this really interesting topic. Um, I think we've really spanned the big picture context, the questions, the challenges, and some of the much finer nuts and bolts and I think there's uh, been a lot shared and a lot learned. So we will be preparing a blog uh, and we will include the slides in that uh, and we hope people will stay in touch there and, and as we move forwards with uh, EPIC uh, project and future webinars and, and exchanges on, on this topic. We welcome feedback. Um, we hope everyone stays very safe and we stay connected and keep on with this work looking at how to support producers in their commercial agriculture from all our different perspectives. So thank you to all the panelists and thank you to all the participants and we look forward to connecting as we move forward together. Thank you very much. <laughs>